I have a few favorite G.I. Joes, and all for various reasons. Mutt's always been one of my favorites because his love for dogs is something I share with him, and like me, he gets along better with dogs better than he does humans. Let's talk about Mutt and his dog junkyard. Before we do though, let me say thank you for watching JLS Comics, whether it's your first time here or you're back for more. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the content that I upload just like this each and every week. Let's jump into this video. Stanley was born and raised in Isla, New Jersey, although his Action Force counterpart hails from Madrid, Spain. His figure had a European release where he was actually from Glasgow, Scotland, and his name for that figure is Andrew McKenzie, still with the codename Mutt. But back to the US, Mutt spent a lot of time with his uncle Jeff who lived in Millville. Growing up, his family had five dogs and he was especially adept at training them and getting the small pack to obey his commands. One time when he was young, there was a B and E incident. Stanley's five dogs surrounded the thief and contained them, at Stan's command mind you, and held them there until the police could arrest him. He would then go on to enlist in the United States Army, graduating Jungle Warfare Training School. As his file card says, he was attached as a cadre to Special Ops School and an advisor to Security and Enforcement Committee. It's most likely around this time that he began working with his pet and teammate Junkyard. His V3 file card tells us that they've been working together for so long that they no longer need to give each other audible or visible signals and that it's as if they function as one organism. After boot camp, his V2 file card outlines, Mutt was picked up by the G.I. Joe K-9 Battalion and later assigned to Slaughter's Marauders as the animal control and utilization technician for the sub-team. He would also be later a part of the Drug Elimination Force where he became the supersonic Ford America driver. He first appeared in A Real American Hero with issue 25. However, he was first mentioned in issue 22. A fan wrote in asking, Hey Larry, can we get a character with a dog? So Larry actually responded by announcing the arrival of Mutt and Junkyard in issue 25. In the debut issue, there was Torpedo and Tripwire as they ride out over the Florida Everglades in a pair of dragonflies. Somehow, our four-legged Junkyard friend is riding perfectly fine on the helicopter skid. I always found that interesting. I was able to, you know, do that perfectly balanced. In the Everglades, Junkyard tracked down Wild Weasel and Firefly, cornering them until they're able to be tied up by the team. Then Junkyard decided to go say hello to Zartan at the cabin. On the way back, Zartan actually tried to shoot the poor puppy. What a jerk. It was Destro of all people who stopped Zartan from shooting Junkyard, but along with Baroness and Cobra Commander, they did chase the dog into the jungle. And in their pursuit, they fell into the quicksand. It was a trap set up by Junkyard. Around the same time, Wild Weasel and Firefly escaped, and so Mutt and the team chased them. Junkyard triggered a Malaysian Tiger Gate trap, but because of his height, it didn't impale him, and he ended up saving the team. So far, Junkyard's been the most successful one on this mission. Ultimately, they headed back to G.I. Joe Freighter, the Jane, which was anchored off the Florida coast. It was right around this time that he also made a cameo in G.I. Joe Yearbook 2, still on the freighter, as they intercepted the October Guard, Destro, and the Baroness, and the laser they had on the train. In ARAH issue 38, Mutt and Junkyard went to Staten Island to raid the house of a Cobra CG named Professor Apple, along with Lady J, Duke, Blowtorch, Cover Girl, and Snake Eyes. Junkyard saved Mutt during the raid by dropping a grenade in a sink. They were able to recover oceanic maps and topographical data for a mysterious project of Cobras in the Gulf of Mexico. It would be the plans which would trick the G.I. Joe team into disrupting a fault line and give rise, quite literally, to Cobra Island. In issue 73, Mutt, Junkyard, and Spirit were on the perimeter of the base. They found a ACDC shirt belonging to the Star Viper that stole the Defiant Space Shuttle's black box. A box that would pull the G.I. Joes into Cobra Civil War. So during the Civil War, Mutt and Junkyard made landfall with the engineering team on the whale. They had to take out the Aspen placements at the end of the runway so the transport planes could use the airfield to land more troops and equipment. With some satchel charges in hand, they destroyed the 120mm cannon batteries just as a C-130 did a low flyover. They did it just in time. Mutt and Junkyard were with Law and Order and Cross Country, staking out a gas station in New Jersey that the Dreadnoughts were using as a temporary base. As they crept in closer for a better view, Thrasher and Buzzer caught on to them and gave chase. Buzzer chased Junkyard with his chainsaw as he led him away from Mutt. Buzzer actually caught up with Junkyard and ended up injuring the poor puppy. And you actually have Buzzer on his motorcycle with his chainsaw in hand chasing Junkyard and Junkyard running away saying, Arf! A firefight ensued and the G.I. Joe squad ended up capturing three of the Dreadnoughts. And this is when Mutt got his revenge on Buzzer for injuring his friend. Soon thereafter, the Dreadnoughts were released and so Mutt went out on a mission with Battle Force 2000 soon thereafter just so he could kick Buzzer again. 
Junkyard was all right. He was bandaged and wounded, but recovering. After this, Mutt went on leave, and he took his pet with him and his friend's spirit. Mutt decided to go back to Millville to visit his uncle again. The town was gritty and impoverished after a mill closed down that had basically kept the entire place running economically. Cobra Commander happened to want to capitalize on this, using it to his advantage to make a Springfield 2.0. So, while Mutt and Junkyard and Spirit were in town, Cobra invaded. The brainwave scanner brainwashed the Millville residents that wouldn't comply with the orders to follow along with Cobra. Mutt and Spirit stole a his tank and went to Uncle Jeff's house, but they were too late. He'd already been brainwashed. And so a guy named Russ helped them escape from the Cobra Vipers, where they all planned to fight back against Cobra. And that's when Law and Order, another guy with a dog, and Hawk showed up looking for Spirit and Mutt. Turns out that Cobra's brainwashing could be turned off and on at will, so when Hawk showed up, Cobra made it look like everyone was normal. It actually looked like they were the ones attacking the town. So they were arrested and suspended from active duty with G.I. Joe. A while later, and the G.I. Joe team discovered that they weren't actually lying, but the formal charges and indictments were still filed, so they were on base duty and they actually joined other sub-teams. And that leads us to issue 124. Mutt and Junkyard were now part of the Drug Elimination Force, along with Shockwave, Cutter, and Bulletproof. They were in Broca Beach, running down a drug dealer named Headman, but running into resistance from his headhunter, Henchman. They ended up chasing him into a funhouse, where a close quarters firefight started quickly. Mutt might have had a wormhole on his face, or the CGI that plagues Superman in Justice League, because his mustache comes and goes in this issue. Headman actually escaped, and they chased him, tracking his shipments to New York City. Cobra Commander is the one who used General Colton's laser in the Chrysler building to destroy the vessel, and so Mutt and the DEF were able to arrest Headman. They later went back with the team into Millville, now run over with Cobra and Decepticons to help liberate them. And it was then in issue 145 that all the charges against Mutt and Spirit were formally dropped, and so Mutt and Junkyard remained an active part of the G.I. Joe team until they were stood down and decommissioned in 1994 with issue 155. Junkyard himself grew older, and so Mutt decided to retire his friend, and he would go on to work with Junkyard 2, the son of Junkyard, and this was revealed in G.I. Joe Volume 2 by Devil's Do. Since the Homiverse team was called back to duty, Mutt and Junkyard have primarily served base duty and perimeter patrol, although he would go on a couple missions from time to time should someone with his MOS be required. For the Robert Graves rescue op that kicked off in issue 193, Mutt and Junkyard were actually assigned to Alpha Team, and as they all yelled, Yo, Joe! Junkyard gave his best happy face. So they jumped out of the C-130 over Sierra Gordo, Mutt, in tandem with Junkyard, who had his goggles on and his tongue flapping out the side of his mouth, looking like he's having a great old time at terminal velocity. Boots now on terra firma, the team made their way through the jungle and found the terror drum where Robert Graves and the other hostages were being held prisoner. And as they pressed on, Mutt reminded Junkyard to mind his quote-unquote wolf discipline, meaning don't bark too loud, so he gave a nice low grr as his affirmative. Junkyard alerted to a minefield around the terror drone, so they had to take point to find a path through. The breaching team followed closely behind them. But at the Terradrome wall, they were ambushed by rebels, taken prisoner down in the mines below the Terradrome. And I feel like I'm saying Terradrome a lot. Anyway, Junkyard was still outside, saw a blue ninja rebel named Ernesto, or CBX001, who had come out of a trapdoor. He leapt on the rebel who smacked him, and Ernesto was about to shoot Junkyard, but Junkyard leapt up and ripped in part of his neck out in the process. He was again about to shoot Junkyard when Lola, Robert Graves' girlfriend, rolled up on a motorcycle and put Ernesto down with some high vel AP. And as Robert Graves and Lola were reunited, Junkyard was still biting the leg of Ernesto. Robert Graves told him he's a good boy. You did your job, he said. You were a good soldier. And so Junkyard licked his hand. Mutt and the team cleared the terror drone while Flint and Lady J brought a wounded roadblock up to meet their relief team who'd just showed up with a medical team. Mutt and Junkyard were in issue 263 at the ceremony at the pit for their fallen friends. And so that's how we leave Mutt and his best friend Junkyard, still a vital part of the team, protecting the base, protecting the pit, as they rapidly deploy to the future, wherever that takes our stories. On the animated side, Mutt and Junkyard showed up in the Sunbow cartoon quite a bit. They first appeared in an episode called In the Cobra's Pit, the first part of the Revenge of Cobra miniseries. In Pyramid of Darkness, he was commanding the space shuttle and spent the miniseries fighting dreadnoughts and fatal fluffies up on the space station. He talked about his parents in the holiday episode called Cobra Claws are Coming to Town. He gets seasonal affective disorder, apparently. In Cobra's Creatures, Mutt took a Sky Striker up to 40,000 feet, switched on the autopilot, and ejected right out. Junkyard was ejected too, but he had his canine core shoot on. 
but they were captured by Cobra helicopters in a cloud with a giant net. And imprisoned, Junkyard was going to bite the Cobra soldiers, but Mutt told him no, he'd get rabies from them. Junkyard was shot with Dr. Lucifer's high freak weapon. His eyes glowed blue and Cobra Commander sent Mutt out so Junkyard could actually chase him. After an incident with a crocodile, Junkyard was about to kill Mutt, but the high freak device was destroyed. Mutt was back to being a good boy. In Arise Serpento Arise, the five-parter that kicked off Season 2, they were part of the team defending the tomb of Genghis Khan. In Million Dollar Medic, Lifeline had to fix up Junkyard who'd been injured. He also got a feature with a PSA where he warned kids, us at the time I suppose, not to pet stray dogs. Never try to pet a dog you don't know, he told the boy. You may be lost, sick, or scared. He was also in G.I. Joe the movie, although very briefly, and he didn't say anything. And they were also in the Deke series, but in his 1989 gear instead of the 84 outfit he wore for Sunbow. On the action figure side, Mutt was first released with his animal sidekick Junkyard, the first in the line to be released with an animal, in 1984. That year they showed up in the Battle Stations commercial, manning the Bivouac. Estrella released Mutt in Brazil with the name Mastum. His file card in Portuguese says that Mastiff's bravery, which earned him the name Wild Dog, coupled with the fury of his police dog, faces any danger. For V2, he joined Slaughter's Marauders in 1989, still with his pet, his nightstick, and his silenced Mac 11. In 1992, for V3, Mutt and Junkyard joined G.I. Joe's Drug Elimination Force, aligning with the story in Larry Hama's comic books. He came with a net launcher that would shoot poles and light up when you fired the spring-loading projectiles. It was all the rage at the time. Mutt was then part of the Paddle Corps in 1993, and now he has smoke bombs and an XL-66 hyper-powered rocket launcher. In 2004, Mutt and Junkyard were Tiger Force military police in the Dreadnought Rampage set that was released at the Joe convention in Orlando that year. In 2004, Mutt joined the Anti-Venom Task Force for a Toys R Us exclusive box set. And the next year, Mutt became Sergeant Mutt, but by 2008, he was back to just Mutt. But now I want to hear from you. What's your favorite Mutt or Junkyard story? Was your introduction to them in the comic books, action figures, or in the animation series? That's a wrap on this one, my friends. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.